Hi, I'm Roland Sally, and I'm talking with David Ward today on the record, musicians on the record. I'm out in California, he's in Maine, so here's a little thing. If I was in San Diego and you was in Portland, Maine, I'd fly to you like stock and bone through hail and falling rain. Over the mountains and down in the valley, just trying to get to each other. Don't take us but a few minutes to get to one another. There was, the first time I was really nervous was when, I, when, when my group in Wisconsin opened three shows for Jimi Hendrix because there were about 50,000 people at the first show. And, uh, and uh, you want to talk about petrified. I bet. I remember how I moved my arms and legs to get on stage, but I did. And, and I was really, really just like for the whole, th here's what happened. For the first three songs of, the, of, the, of that set, Hendrix's equipment was behind us and we were in front of him and they, they were, when we were done, they would clear our stuff and then pull the curtain and his stuff would be there. So we had this one little acoustic part of the song that went way down quiet and then the band kind of came in and our lead guy was doing this, delivering this acoustic part. So I'm in the wings waiting to come in, you know, and be all theatrical about it and stuff. <laughs> Suddenly I hear this <laughs> What's going on? And I go back and I look around behind and it's Mitch Mitchell. And he's taking a drum solo. He has no idea that there's a band on stage in front. And he's back there he's practicing his drums, but it was like, you know, like Charlie Brown, it was like a like a blur and there's sticks flying out of here, the leg over here, arm here, whack, 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 just cymbals flying and stuff. And, and it's, it's destroying our little quiet part out in the front. Just at that moment, I see my girlfriend, who's a big girl from New York. She's coming from the other side of the state. She's sprinting like, like this. And, and it's, it's like in slow motion. She's like, <laughs> she gets about 10 feet from Mitch Mitch, launches herself, grabs him around the neck, hauls him off the drums, and just proceeds to beat the crap out of him. Oh my God. <laughs> My boyfriend's out there going to the Pacific <laughs> Somehow that broke the tension. <laughs> I got over my nervousness right there. Sure. Yeah. That was it. What? <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea another band was even on stage. Yeah. So he's like, prepare to die, you little limey. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so incredible story with Mitch Mitchell. Tell me about your experience with Jimi Hendrix. How did you uh, connect with him? You know, you you'd seen you would have seen him uh, in, in in the Monterey thing, you know, and all the all the footage and, 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 the, and the TV stuff, and listened to his records and seen uh, photographs of him and stuff. But when you see him in person, coming down the hallway with a you know with orange silk pants a purple silk shirt, a fuchsia purple jacket, and, you know, and a lime green, you know, scarf around his head, carrying a guitar with a cigarette hanging out of his lip, you know, hey man, cool, how's it going? It's just like, wow. <laughs> he was a bigger than life, and, and uh, what, a, what a musician, what a, what a guitar player live to watch him play was just, it's one thing to see uh, see footage of it, but to, but to actually see him play was was unbelievable. And he was, you know, I remember uh, he he he, uh, he had a, a cigarette dangling in the back of his uh, corner of his mouth, and he's walking through the backstage area, and one of the stage hands at work did it and said, "Oh, excuse me, uh, there's no smoking back here. You have to put that cigarette out." He goes, "Hey, man, it's part of my act." <laughs> Oh, it's just like, this is pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to stop. Um, you're not going to stop Jimmy from doing that, right? At the, at the time, though, I think he was not real happy with the way his record company and, and some of his business stuff was going, and he, he was trying really hard to, to, to move into, into some different, different things. Uh, and I wish he'd been able to because... Oh, can you imagine if he if he'd been around all these years and was still out there playing today? What what he would have? I can only imagine what he would have uh, contributed. 